Hello and welcome to episode 34 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's highlights include a controversial vote, a live marathon, and various recording sessions. On the 3rd of February 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, played another night for 17-year-old promoter Dave Forshaw at the St. John's Hall in Bootle, England. For the occasion, the venue was renamed Blue Penguin Club, and the band's fee was increased to £7.10, shillings, about £170 in 2020 money. In 1962, the Beatles, still with Pete Best on drums, performed an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Same venue in 1963, Back in Liverpool for a two-day break from the package tour with Helen Shapiro, the Beatles headed an eight-hour, eight-band rhythm and blues marathon night at the Cavern Club. Naturally, they just performed one slot during the night, along with the foremost, Kingsides Taylor and the Dominoes, the Hollies, the Mercy Beats, the Roadrunners, Earl Preston and the TTs, and the Swinging Blue Jeans. Moving on to 1964, the day saw the Beatles visiting the American Embassy in Paris, France, to get all the paperwork to travel and work in the United States. This, naturally, was in preparation for their imminent first visit in the US. At night, the band performed the usual two concerts at the Olympia Theatre. On the 3rd of February 1966, Paul McCartney attended a live performance of 15-year-old Stevie Wonder at the Scotch of St. James Club in London. The two met backstage and chatted quite a bit. 1967, a day in the life, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr were the focus of today's work in Abbey Road. Between 7 p.m. and 1.15 a.m., Ringo re-recorded his drum track for the song, coming up with a more tom-oriented sound to complement the piece, while Paul re-recorded his vocal and bass tracks. Their previous parts were erased. Another recording session in 1968. The Beatles were at the EMI Studios between 2.30 and 6 p.m., to tape three piano and drum takes for the rhythm track of their next single, Lady Madonna. Then, between 7 pm and 12 midnight, the band overdubbed bass, fuzz guitars, more drums, lead and backing vocals on the afternoon's work. Before the session ended, the Fabs also taped two takes of Across the Universe, John Lennon's contender for the A side of the single with Take 2 also receiving overdubs. This version was released years later in the Anthology 2 album. In 1969, in the morning, the Beatles met Alan Klein and John Eastman at the Apple headquarters. It was the day that Klein was appointed manager of the band in a dramatic 3-1 vote. The dissenting Paul McCartney had tried to have Mick Jagger talk about the willing and dealing of Klein during his time as manager of the Rolling Stones, but Jagger, perhaps unwilling to talk against his current manager in his face, simply commented, he's all right if you like that kind of thing. The split vote was a particularly significant event. It was the first time that a decision was taken without the full support of all the Beatles, and naturally, this would have had consequences. It took months for Klein's appointment to be formalized, but all the main staff members at Apple were informed of the arrangement immediately. John Eastman agreed to act as legal advisor for the Beatles. Ideally, Klein and Eastman agreed to work together in harmony for the best interest of the band, but this would not be the case. In the afternoon, Ringo Starr began working on the shooting for his second film, The Magic Christian. The first film featuring his acting, Candy, was still awaiting its official release. It would come out on the 20th of February 1969, but Ringo had decided to take part to the new project anyway. 
his support role had been created for him after director Joe McGrath and protagonist Peter Sellers had cast him, altering the 1951 novel by Terry Southern, on which the story was based. The script was written by McGrath, with help from Southern himself, Sellers, and two still unknown authors, John Cleese and Graham Chapman, who also had an acting role. The shooting took place during 13 weeks, but there is no surviving documentation about the day-to-day -day activity. Ringo's part in the film was substantial, as he was starring in one of the main roles. In the evening, Alan Klein met Clive Epstein and asked him to wait three weeks for a decision on the future of NEMS, time needed to assess the Beatles' financial situation. You will recall the whole story from episodes 28 and 32 of What A Fab Day. Clive Epstein agreed, and Klein proceeded to his offices in New York City to work on the matter. On the 3rd of February 1970, between 2.30 and 7.00 pm, the eighth session for Ringo Starr's debut solo album, Sentimental Journey, took place at the EMI Studios. The afternoon of work produced the remake of Love is a Many Splendid Thing, with arranger Quincy Jones conducting eight takes of the 16-piece orchestral track between 2.30 and 4.30 pm. The rest of the session included the recording of organ overdubs by Billy Preston and vocal overdubs by Ringo, plus the mixing of the song in stereo. This concludes this episode of What A Fab Day. Please visit www.simonmas.com support if you feel like showing some support for this podcast or my other music-related endeavors. In the episode description, you'll find the usual link to the Amazon affiliate list of sources whose study made this podcast possible. We will continue tomorrow with more stories about the Beatles. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.